Welcome back. Some uh, cool off, but 10 points basically. 86 points still higher on the Nifty uh, is uh, what we have. Just wanted to highlight a couple, a bunch of names before we move on to uh, some technical trading ideas uh, right now. Uh, so, uh, M&M Finance is doing very, very well. It's up about 4%, 366. IRCTC is another one which is uh, jumping about 4% higher. Uh, Biocon, 3.5% uh, uh, in the green. Uh, there's Affil India, which is up 7% on uh, very strong volumes, by the way. Uh, Adani Ports is coming back about 3% right now. Uh, there is Arti uh, Industries, which is up 7%. Uh, Tata Coffee is up about 4%. Uh, there's uh, Shalby in, uh, Industries, 13% higher, about 114 odd rupees or so. Uh, and I mean, actually more names, Balrampur, Dhampur, Dhanuka, a lot of agri names uh, coming up with between 3 and 5 to 6% gains. And all of them, by the way, uh, good volumes uh, at uh, this point in time. And as I said, the market breadth is still very, very positive in favor of advances. Uh, and broader markets are doing better than Nifty. Mitesh Thakkar is with us. Mitesh, uh, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so, I mean, it's uh, back to a uh, uptrend, or you think it's too early? Uh, see, I think Prashant, good morning. Uh, my belief is that you know we are not in any kind of a strong trending market, but more of a sideways activity. We've uh, had supports around twelve thousand fifty and then eleven nine thirty, so we kind of held twelve fifty yesterday and bounced back. The first level I was looking at was twelve one fifty and. Uh, I think with this, you know, uh, the the, uh, uh, the short-term charts remain, you know, decently uh, poised uh, and 12,150 has been tested. But I think once we start getting past that, maybe, you know, I think we'll look at a possibility of uh, levels of around 12 to 30 happening. So it's a rainbow market. You have to take it step by step and trade with more of uh, charts, which, you know, where, when the short-term charts suggest some kind of a bias. And... Uh, uh, I don't know, I think they are positive, so I am still hopeful that 12 months will be uh, taken out on the upside and we will head towards 12 to 30 to 40 zones. Hmm. Mitesh, uh, I wanted your thoughts on Tata Motors. How would you approach that stock, the upside that we've seen on it? See, uh, Tata Motors, I think, you know, uh, again, uh, had a good rally till about levels of 200, has come down given a pullback. I think 175, 172 is a strong support area. It's bouncing back from those levels. I think it can possibly bounce back to about 193, 194. So it remains in a trading zone, not a not an investment uh, stock right now. But I think uh, it's it had a breakout about this 175, 180. It's come back to those levels, bounce back from there. I think for the time being, just wait it out for some consolidation. I think once 193, 195 is cleared after some consolidation, then we'll look at the next uh, leg of up move happening. Okay. And stocks, Mitesh? Uh, on the stock side, uh, I have buys on LNT with a stop at 1350 for targets of 1420, and Adani Enterprises is a buy with a stop at 230 for targets of 245. All right, uh, thanks very much, Pitesh. Appreciate you joining us uh, and running us through your trading ideas right now. Uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, Rajesh Pirwani is ready with us. I think we can go across to him, founder and portfolio manager uh, at uh, Valcreate Investment Managers. So, Rajesh, thanks for your time. Good to see you today. Uh, so, uh, you know. Are you expecting anything uh, big from the budget, Rajesh, to begin with? Uh, see, I think uh, the government has to uh, take measures to kickstart the economy. Uh, I would hope, I mean, I don't know what the expectations are, but I would hope a few uh, of the measures that uh, I'd like to list. One is uh, productive expenditure, uh, which is uh, more infrastructure related. Uh, expenditure, which is... Uh, you know, which leads to job creation. I think uh, instead of uh, focusing on cutting taxes, I think the government should focus on, uh, you know, spending more on productive expenditure. That is the first thing that I would uh, want uh, this time. The second thing I want is uh, something for the mid-cap space for the investors uh, in terms of long-term uh, capital gains tax going away. And the third thing uh, which I want personally, if you ask me, is uh, something to get start the real, real estate sector. There are a lot of uh, strong projects and we need uh, sort of a restructuring, a one-time restructuring from the government to fund that. Uh, the fourth area which I, uh, which I uh, want uh, personally is the rural side of the economy. If they, have, if they allocate more towards the uh, rural guarantee, uh, employment guarantee schemes, 
uh, that would uh, also kickstart the rural side of the economy and that can also lead to consumption growth. I think these are the four measures they will have to, I think this year's finances have been taken care of by the government. Uh, RBI has already given a dividend. Uh, we've got a low interest cost in place. So I think somewhere they will be able to manage the finances for this year, but for the next year, I think the disinvestment would be uh, one avenue which I think the government can use. Uh, and buoyancy of the markets that we are seeing right now can be used to, uh, you know, to exit from a lot of the public sector uh, undertakings where uh, I don't think the government would want to be there. So I think that's one way of raising money for the next year. Okay. Rajesh, talking specifically about mid-caps, what do you like? So uh, I have, uh, you know, invested in a lot of uh, spaces where the tailwinds are in favor of these companies. A uh, lot of businesses where uh, the, the tailwinds, tailwinds are in favor of these companies. For example, I like the specialty chemical space. I like the contract manufacturing, uh, contract research uh, in, in the pharma sector. I like uh, the gas plays, the gas distribution plays. I think the tailwind is definitely in favor of these companies with the environment issues in place. Uh, there are uh, domestic uh, pharma MNCs which are looking very good. See, the, the fact is that uh, you know a lot of these companies are not impacted by the cyclical headwinds in the economy today. And uh, that is where I think uh, they have done extremely well. And I see them to continue delivering quarter after quarter in the next, uh, you know, uh, many years to come. Uh, you know, if you look at the specialty chemical space, uh, the opportunity is at least $25 billion over five years uh, for the size that India is talking about. It's, it's pretty big. And uh, with, with the China headwinds now, I think this even bigger opportunity that I see uh, for Indian companies. In contract manufacturing, again, the global uh, pharma industry today is a $1 trillion industry, and the contract manufacturing industry is just about $100 billion. So I think uh, uh, good quality contract manufacturing players, or contract manufacturing and research play, plays in India are going to gain from this. They have very strong business models with very reasonable ROIs on, on the whole business, the core business. And I think that, that's a space I would, uh, would, would bet on. And on gas, as I just mentioned, that uh, environment is in favor. LNG, is, LNG prices are falling, administered price, prices are falling, and uh, there is a reasonable volume growth. Uh, the incumbents are going to benefit from first over advantage. And uh, even though we see competition on the horizon, I think they'll continue to grow their volume, given the scenario today. Uh, on domestic MNC pharma, I, as I said, you know, uh, India is still uh, underpenetrated in terms of medical insurance, in terms of uh, you know, treatments and uh, spending on healthcare, and also with increases in per capita income over you know, in the next few years, I see uh, pharma, uh, you know, domestic MNC pharma with launch of patented products as well uh, to continue to do well. So these are the four five spaces that I like in the current scenario. There are certain uh, NBFCs and uh, you know HFCs and banks where, where again, I think uh, you know with ROEs of 17, 18 percent, and some of these are trading at. Uh, one time book, one and a half time price to book uh, because of the current environment that we have in place. Uh, probably they are depressed because of the environment. Uh, there are you know some issues with the NPA uh, increases and trade costs going up. But I think over the next uh, one or two years, all of this will get solved and some of these companies will come back to trading at much higher valuations given that the ROEs are uh, much uh, much in favor, much higher than the, cost, you know, the overall cost of capital in, in, in India. And uh, also, uh, you know, the growth rates will come back to normal. All right, uh, Rajesh, uh, thanks very much. Good speaking with you. Appreciate you joining us uh, with that list of uh, companies and sectors that you like. Well, uh, with a few days left for the union budget, we caught up with two top global investors and asked them about their budget wish list and what global investors expect from the finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman. Brian Jacobson of Wells Fargo Funds Management wants the budget to focus on reforms for the uh, financial sector. Uh, while uh, Fiera Capital wants the government to focus on structural reforms rather than short-term fixes. Listen. I'm very interested to see what's going to be in the budget. As you pointed out, it often is an opportunity for them to showcase what sorts of reforms are they going to be implementing. And for myself, and I think also for a lot of investors, they're really going to be focusing on what's going to happen with, say, the financial sector. Um, it, the, it was already announced the corporate tax cut which I think was um, a, a good, it was taken very positively. So I'm really keen to see what sort of reforms they have uh, within the budget that are going to maybe help with the credit or the banking picture.
need to see real structural reforms rather than short-term fixes in the economy. So we need to see reforms in uh, labour laws. We need to see reforms in, in land laws. We need to see better functioning of the court. We need to see more predictability around um, decisions regarding arbitration. Um, any, anything, we, we, we need to see a more consistent um, policy on, uh, on power, for example, and infrastructure development. If, if you look at where India, what India is competing with, India is basi basically competing for foreign investment with the rest of Asia. Okay, so that's what the FIIs are expecting from the budget or their wish list from the budget this Saturday. But we also spoke to members of India Inc. on what their expectations are from the budget. Um, let's listen in to opinion from Vikram Kirloskar and Sangeeta Reddy. Government spending increase, infrastructure spending will increase confidence in the consumer. Right now, people, I think, are scared to some extent saying, how will I finance my repayments? That's, that's one critical issue. Biggest issue I feel for Make in India, and if I look at any of these big value chains that are around, is that the policies or regulations are getting changed too fast, and sometimes they're getting changed within the depreciation time, so you end up with an impairment rather than utilizing the full value of the asset. We need to make multiple interventions. It's not just one big silver bullet here. And I think the first one is what we have been saying, everyone at FICI, including the economists and all the senior leaders here, did analyze. And the single point that we're saying is put more money into consumers' hands. For that, you need to pump prime the economy by an influx of cash. So to say this, everybody would naturally ask, where will this money come from? And I think we should boldly go out there and say, we do not mind a slight expansion of the fiscal deficit. The government must raise 1.5 to 2 lakh crores, push that into the economy, whether it's in pending payments or putting money into the hands of the consumer, that will kind of bring back the economy uh, and the growth rates. Bank scales new heights with your support. We are humbled by the trust you place in us. Let's take this.